All right, good morning. In this lesson, we're going to take a look again. We're continuing with our circles talk. And whether you believe me or not, you literally could probably do almost a half a year just on circles. Like there is that much involved with circles. That is maybe the worst one ever. So what we're going to do is take a look at this. The perimeter. Right? We know perimeters, we add up the sides, right? And someone said this actually last week when we were doing different shapes, putting them in order. They said the issue with the circle is there is no sides. So how are you supposed to actually figure this out? We are doing area. We are putting little squares in this. Like it doesn't fit, right? It's true. It doesn't fit. So what they actually have to do with circles is they actually kind of scrap this idea. They still can measure the distance around the outside, but instead of the perimeter, it actually gets a new name, which is called circumference. Now, I know a lot of you have heard and seen this and dealt with it before. Just know the circumference is a distance around a circle. Now, again, I'll go back to this kind of general question is when you say, like, how do you measure a circle? This circle is obviously smaller than this circle, but like how much smaller is it? So one way to measure is by diameter. You could say this is two and oh, this is six. Another way to do it is what's the distance around this circle and what's the distance around this circle? And here's what you have to think about. Why is this important? Think wheels on a car or wheels on a bike. Which kind of bike will go faster? A bike with small wheels or a bike with bigger wheels? Let that sink in a little bit. Which bike will travel faster? Well, if this bike is going to go 50 miles per hour, which is cruising on a bike. So imagine you're going down the biggest downhill ever. Do you realize how fast these little wheels would have to turn in order to travel 50 miles per hour? Now, this same bike, the other bike, is going also 50 miles per hour. Realize these wouldn't have to spin nearly as fast, right? It's like taking a grocery cart versus I don't know, something with a bigger wheel. So the distance around plays a huge part in the distance that travels on a wheel. So let me clean up all these horribly drawn bikes and let's actually get to it. So at some point, we will get a bike in the room, hoping to turn it upside down and actually like figure out how long it would take to drive that bike a mile, et cetera, et cetera. But you have this wheel and what you do is pick a mark on the tire and then you start to roll the wheel. So the wheel starts rolling, right? And as it's rolling, it's traveling this distance on the ground. And you go until this mark ends up back on the ground. So as the wheel starts turning, this mark will go up almost like a Ferris wheel. It'll get to the top. So about halfway, it'll be at the top and then it'll start working its way back down until it actually touches again, up, over, down till it touches again. Every time the wheel rotates once, that's that distance you've traveled. And what distance is that? It's a wheel. Imagine cutting it with a big pair of scissors and stretching the wheel out. That distance that one wheel rotation travels is the same as the distance around the circle, which is circumference. So that's why this all becomes very important as far as why to do this. Okay. Some cars have bigger wheels, trucks, etc. Right? Monster trucks. They have big wheels. Now they have big wheels for other reasons. Tractors. Why do tractors have big wheels in the back? Like there's got to be reasons for this. All right, enough of that. Let's get to it. How do I do circumference? In order to do circumference, you need to know what the diameter is. Okay, you need that for the formula. Here is circumference. Circumference is the diameter times the number pi. Now, you do have pi on your calculator. Take a second, see if you can find it. It is there. There is a button. 
that has a pi on it. Okay. Typically, though, if you're working in IXL, if you're working on Get More Math, if you're working on a worksheet, they're going to say, please use the number 3.14 instead of the pi button. Here's why. Pi, if you remember, is an irrational number, which means it's super messy and never ends. So typically, if we're all going to get the same answer, because there's always that kid in class who's like, I got 3.141579, you know, there's always that one person who wants to read all the digits. So we just are going to replace pi with 3.14. So what do we do? Take the diameter times 3.14 and you get the distance around a circle, which is pretty cool because if you ever tried to take a ruler and bend it to try to get the distance around a circular shape, you can't do it, it's impossible. So let me clean some of this up. And let's use our formula. Diameter times pi, diameter times pi, diameter times pi, diameter times pi. Okay, here's a circle, diameter equals six. What is the circumference? Remember, diameter times pi. So replace out numbers. Oh, six times 3.14 equals, I don't know, you have a calculator figured out. What is six times 3.14? Good, there's your answer. All right, let's try this. Um, another circle, diameter is 15. Huh, what's the diameter? What's the circumference? What's the distance around that circle? Huh, diameter times pi. Okay, 15 times 3.14. Go ahead, pause, get an answer. Let's see if it's right. Simple enough. Now, what people try to do is make things harder. Here's a circle. The distance from the center to the edge is four. What's the circumference? Well, we know circumference is diameter times pi. Wait a minute. This isn't the diameter. So there's two ways you can do this. Think about it at the beginning or think about it now. I would rather think about it at the beginning. If somebody gives me half distance across, which is the radius, I'm just going to go ahead and draw the rest of it. Oh, if that's four, so is this. So what is my diameter of this circle? Oh, my diameter is actually eight. So I can go over here and say, oh, my diameter is eight times 3.14 and get your answer. Go ahead, type it in. Let's check, see if you're right. Last one. Radius is 3.5. Uh-oh, decimals, that's okay. Well, circumference is diameter times pi. All right, so if my radius halfway across the circle is 3.5, what's the whole way across the circle? No longer is it 3.5, that's right, it's 7. Oh, so diameter is 7, so put a 7 in, 3.14. Go ahead, fill in your answer, see if you're right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is circumference, and someone just knocked on the door and scared me. So, good luck, do the best you can.